Hello everybody, welcome to Oscar Rusty Bucket. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. We are about 5K away from hitting 100,000, so your subscription would seriously be much appreciated. Also drop a like on this video, it only takes one second, it makes a massive difference in how the video performs in the YouTube algorithm. Also, real quick, I have to shout something out. Today at, let's, probably like 6.30 or so, me, Rudy, Alex, Hoops, we are all gonna be doing a live podcast talking about the Lakers, LeBron, and we're also doing a bracket of teams that have the worst luck in the league. Uh, it's a very interesting concept that I'm looking forward to playing. It's gamified. And all of the old episodes and all episodes from now on are on audio platforms like Spotify, Apple Music, or Apple Podcasts, whatever, all that. So link will be in the description to all that. And come through to check it out live. It's really fun, especially when you guys interact in the chat. Anyways, uh, Kendrick Perkins sucks at his job so hard. It is unbelievable. And it is boring borderline insulting that he continues to get a platform from ESPN or whatever freaking company it is that employs him because I barely pay attention to that kind of stuff. But Kendrick Perkins the other day, if you did not know, went on basically an entire rampage campaign against Nikola Jokic and his MVP case, which to me, I just got to say from the onset that it almost feels not even worthwhile to break down why Kendrick Perkins is wrong. And I also want to just put it out there that for this year's MVP, it's like 100% Nikola Jokic. I'm sorry, it just is. I'm probably going to make a main channel video on that. I don't know that there's any other way to put it. I can't contend in another way. I can't try and appease another fan base and just sit there and pretend like it's really not Nikola Jokic because he has probably the most impressive stats in the league, at least to me, and certainly up there, no freaking question. And that's not a advanced stats that's just factual box score numbers uh he has the winning i believe the nuggets have if not the best record in the league one of them uh, and i know they're the first seed in the western conference uh and he has the impact the impact metrics for him are off the freaking charts as they have always been um so Jokic is the mvp this year but for some reason and really it's mostly because the guy might be three-peating uh people take issue with it so what did kendrick perkins say well first of all there was the racial argument and I don't necessarily want to touch that uh given you know the lack of melanin in my skin it's a it's a, a risque subject to talk about but I'll just throw this out there I am someone who believes that racism is a lot more ingrained in society and elements of like everything than a lot of other people will give it credit for um that said i don't think that nikola Jokic is winning mvp um because he's white uh i also want to say that last year nikola Jokic wasn't even my mvp pick but let's just the race thing i don't want to talk about that let's talk about his other argument so you get caught up in the moment when you're in those moments and in the locker room again okay. I wasn't a Hall of Fame player, but guess what? I played with over 10 Hall of Fame players, and I didn't been a part of big moments of their moments when they have reached milestones or they had epic game performances okay. or they knew they were two points of uh, away from having 50 or uh, career high and things to that nature. The other argument was that Nikola Jokic is stat padding. And there's been a little bit of a comparison between him and Russell Westbrook. There's been a lot of argument about uh, when Russ averaged a triple double, it was, a, you know, a problem. But when Jokic does it, like these advanced stat nerds are all over it. And I can understand why that would be perceived as a double standard. However, Nikola Jokic is not stat padding. Like, definitely. I I'm almost certain that he is not. If you actually watch the Denver Nuggets, which for all these people who hate on Nikola Jokic and are like, I don't get it, why is he like praised to the degree that he is? I don't like pulling the you're not watching the games card because I've had that card pulled on me many times, a thousand times in my life when I was watching the games and I knew that I was watching the games. So I don't like using that argument because I think it's usually crap, but genuinely I wonder what you are watching. Watching. It's actually something that JJ Reddick said. I think it was on a podcast uh, where he was like, are you watching the same game that I am? Because if you are, you would not come away with the conclusions that you are unless you're an idiot or you are pushing a narrative. And in the case of... 
Kendrick Perkins. I think it is both of those things. Uh, as for, pr I mean, you can't really prove that a player is or is not stat padding. I used to believe that Russ stat padded in his 2017 season, and, and maybe he did it here or there, but that's a take that I have slowly walked back from because I don't even really agree with it anymore. Even if I did feel that there was a little bit of inflation of the stats, like at the end of the day, Nikola Jokic is pretty easily averaging a 25 point triple double on 70% true shooting. And the Denver Nuggets are 23 and 0 when he has a triple double. And they have, again, one of the best records in the league. And I'm pretty sure the best offense in the entire league. So, where is the problem? The other point the triple double average is not what is the reason Nikola Jokic is the front runner. He just won two freaking MVPs not having averaged a triple double. People are not arguing Nikola Jokic has to win this MVP because he's averaging a triple double, which is actually an argument that was used for Russell Westbrook plenty, I remember. So it's all silly and it's nonsense and I shouldn't even be wasting my freaking time talking about it. But this kind of crap from Nikola Jokic, this stuff is everywhere and it's prevalent. And when someone like him says the shit that he does, those arguments then become a part of the NBA lexicon. It becomes a part of NBA discourse. It becomes some shit that you have to see. And it's really, 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 really annoying. And I really can't stand it. I, I did a video on Victor Webanyama the other day. Kendrick Perkins was talking crap about him because a guy dunked on him one time after getting blocked by Webby, Wemby like five times in the other previous possessions and he was like one for seven against him. Um, and then he said some shit about like, what? I, I try not to curse anymore in my videos, but this video is it's just not gonna happen. Um, <laughs> God, I feel like I'm not even articulating my points to the degree that I want to because it frustrates me so much. But like he was saying, he, he said like, God bless America and, and Giannis and Embiid are going to put a shoulder in his chest. And it's like, okay, those are foreign born players. Secondly, he also argued in the past that American born players are going to have to take it personally that overseas players keep winning, which is just very weird. And also, I forgot this. He said that Jokic shouldn't be MVP because he's not top 10 in scoring. This is the same same guy that I believe a year, year or two ago, whichever year it was for Chris Paul, was campaigning for Chris Paul to be the MVP while averaging like 17 points a game. So I think we call that a double, double standard. And what frustrates me even more beyond the fact that he has a platform to spew these stupid ass takes, he has a freaking vote. He has a vote for the MVP award. Like he gets to determine if someone would be a unanimous MVP. Like if he's not going to vote for Nikola Jokic, I mean, not that this year is necessarily a unanimous year. I mean, it maybe could be to some people, but probably not. There's definitely strong enough cases that someone deserves a vote, you know? Um, even though I feel like, again, he's just the obvious MVP. He has every box check that is required to win that award. But the fact that he has a vote, the fact that he has a say in that, like there are literally thousands of people out there who would be better at voting for awards than Kendrick Perkins. And uh, the one thing that I will thank Kendrick Perkins for, the one area that I am glad that he exists is he's just the perfect example of why just because you played in the NBA, just because you played organized basketball, just because you played professional basketball, does not mean that you actually are good at talking about it because uh, Kendrick Perkins is not. Uh, not only do I feel like either his understanding of basketball is surface level or just presented that way, it's one of the two. Uh, one way or the other, it comes off that way. And he's also just not particularly skilled in front of a camera, not particularly skilled at articulating his points. It's a part of the job for an NBA analyst or someone doing anything like that on television to be able to communicate their points well but Kendrick Perkins doesn't and then when that gets pointed out he starts to cry like a little bitch about it so yeah Kendrick Perkins sucks and I'm tired of him being on TV please get him get him off of TV uh anyways that is it goodbye